Uh, I will speak to you with a broken English. Uh, you may laugh, but it could be better if I can stand here and speak to you using an African language, because English is a colonial language that was forced to us due to the weakness of our ancestor. So, uh, to be honest, I forgot about this event because I have 25 students under my supervision, and uh, five PhD are going to submit next year, and three, uh, four master. Since I don't trust many people, I'm the only, only uh, uh, supervisor. They don't have co-supervisor. So you can see the, the workload I have. And uh, then somebody called me, then I just run. Let me come and present something. But uh, before I speak about open access, I would like to share with you something that happened this morning. Every year, uh, where should I go? OK. Every year, if you see here very well, the web of science we select the most influential researcher in the world for 21 field. And uh, they will select for 10 years the work that somebody has done for 10 years. But you agree with me that I work only since 2015. Uh, then in my dream, I was telling God, whatever I do, I don't do it for me. I do it to represent Africa. I do it so that one day a black African child will say, I am proud to be an African. I do it because one day I want him to say, this formula was invented by a black African person because the history led us to know that we did not participate in research and we did not do anything. So whatever I do, whatever Prof said that I have done, I did not do it for myself. I did it for a black and a young African person. So this morning, I was extremely very surprised to find out that my name appear in the list of the most influential researcher in the world, representing South Africa in mathematics, representing also Africa in mathematics. They select only 80 mathematicians in all the field of mathematics. And if I can say it in a grim, after three years of work, my name appear. There is one important thing we have to know. You can be irritated. That does not mean anything to me because Onana, who is your friend, can manipulate for your name to appear there. You can be outstanding professor of the university. That does not make any sense to me because maybe the dean or the rector or whoever is your friend, then your name, they promote you. You can also publish 100 paper. That may not also mean anything for me because publishing is, people can publish in junk journal, in fly by night journal. But when you publish paper, and those paper are cited, not only cited, highly cited, and they are top 1%, I can go home now and I retire, I have achieved. And I'm 34 year old. I was expecting this thing to happen when I'm 50. But this happened today. But you will think that uh, this boy is coming here to boast. No, I'm not boasting. The reason why I show you this list is because when you check this list, you will realize that more than 3,000 people out of 6,000 are American people. And most of them are Chinese. Some are Indian. Africa, we are only in the whole field of science, we are only less than 20. Why is it that Chinese, American, are highly cited researchers? Why Africans are not highly cited? Does that mean African people don't publish serious paper? Does that mean African, they don't do research? No, they do. But there is a difference in doing the research. In China, every beginning of the year, they will give to each researcher a grant. And that grant will allow him to publish in all the journals, including open access. Whereas in Africa, they will tell you if you publish in open access, no, it is a paid journal, it's fly by night. Open access 
are not fly by night. Open access is going to be the future because I think if the source is correct, from the, well, above 2020, all the journal, including in Elsevier, will be open access. My question to the vice director of research, if she was here, because she fought me when I told her about open access. I told her the, all the university in the world, they subscribe for the uh, researcher to publish in open access. She told me, no, those things are nonsense. They are, they are not important. If she's here, I will tell her. And she, I will tell her I will not be afraid. If she fire me, two minutes later, I will have a job in China. I was last time in African Academy of Science, a meeting we had there. And there is a lady that came from Oxford to tell us about research. And she presented the graph of research from Africa. She presented the graph of research for open pit, the whole world. So in all the graphs she presented, the only place where Africa was big was for open pit. I don't know if my English is bad, maybe you don't understand. That means most people, Africa is recognized to be a place where people defecate outside with no toilet. That was the only place where Africa was present as was the best in the world. In terms of research, Africa was a straight line. And it was revealed to me by the publisher of a Sevier that Africa contributes only 0.0.2% of the whole research in the world. While China, one country contributes 30%. What happened to Africa? Why are we here? What are we doing? Why are we professor? Why do we have a rector? Why do we have a department of research? The only thing we can hear from America is that Africa is a shithole. The only thing we can hear from France is that African people only make ch children. What happened to us? What happened to our dignity? What happened to Africa that was the birth of knowledge before? What happened to Africa that welcomed many top mathematicians like Pythagoras, like Taylor? They came in Africa to learn mathematics. What happened to that Africa that built the pyramid? What happened to us? Excuse me, I become very emotional when I speak about Africa. I want to fly. I want, I want to be there. I want to, to, to force Africa to be number one. I want to, I, I, I want to do something. That is why I publish brutally. Some people thought I'm publishing rubbish paper. No. I am a founder of more than 14 operator and numerical scheme in mathematics bearing my name, Atangana Balono Derivatives. It is a paper I published in 2016. It has been cited 780 times. We need to put money into research. We need Professor Corley and the Vice Director of Research of CUT to put money into research such that our, our publication can be seen by the rest of the world, that last Chinese and American people paper are seen. Why we cannot also put money into research? But we put money into football. Now I'm champion of the world in mathematics. Nobody will hear my name after the university. But rugby people last time, just because a guy is running behind a ball and throw it somewhere, he's the famous guy, they respect him, they welcome him, with the, the president welcome him. <laughs> the future is open access. We must expose our knowledge. We must expose our contribution. We must expose what we do. And to do that, we have to put money. We should stop putting money to take first year student and send them to America. Because you are not even sure that that first year guy will reach that year. We waste money. We need to put money into research. Such that in the next year, another person from the university name appear here. 
We need to promote the idea of open access as Chinese they are doing, as American they are doing, as European people are doing. I have my friend, he published in a narrow field of mathematics, but every year he have one million euro of grants. And what I did at the beginning of my career, because I wanted to also publish in some open access, the University of Free State deliberately refused to help me. Then since I'm a mathematician, I find a shortcut to publish also in open access. I will contact somebody from UK, and the person will tell me, my friend, don't worry. If you write a brutal paper, I will read. You put my name, I will pay. And I did it, and I told the vice director of research. If she say it is unethical, I will tell her it is unethical to not help a young researcher to be exposed. And that is what we do. That is the only shortcut we can do. We go around, we have to find a source of income. How are we going to publish our paper for the paper to be exposed? What will we do? That is the only way. Chinese, they use us. American people use us. What happened to the money that they give us for research? I, I'm sorry you can go and tell the rector I, I don't say it. I'm not afraid. <laughs> it is time for us to stand and say the truth. The University of Free State cannot grow until we understand that the university is not high school where you teach. It is a place where you do research. You transform the world through research. It is not a place where we come and show how powerful we are because maybe our skin color. It's not a place where you come and show how powerful you are because, oh no, you were born here, uh, that one is a correct, correct. No, it is a place of knowledge where we produce knowledge. And when we produce that knowledge, we have to show it to the whole world through open access. So, I'm not going to be too uh, long. I'm pledging with the University of Free State to look what other people are doing. Why are they successful? Why is it that they are highly cited? Why is it that they have facilitated to publish many papers? Let me tell you something. I belong to a body that around the university in the world. And the dean told me last time, it is bias. It is not bias. They count the number of papers that each university publish a year, the quantity is very important also. The quality follow. The number of editorial board follow. The number of international uh, uh, conference follow. The number of people that you produce that are doing very well around the world also follow. The number of international students that you have in your university follow also. Our international staff. It is not by us. And the big problem, me, I can publish a lot of paper, I can tell you I have my private teacher. My private teacher is God. He's only telling me things in my ear. When I write them, people think that I was supposed to take 10 years to write. Do you know why? Because I love Africa. And I told God, give me things in my heart that will impress European people. That is why I write a lot of paper a year, a lot of books. And the limitation I have so far is that when I write a paper, I submit in this journal, then that journal will tell me, no, you cannot submit another paper because our journal wants you to send only one paper. There is a lot of open access journal that where I can send, but I know that if I send my paper there, if the paper is accepted, I cannot use my salary to pay. The university have to pay, but they don't pay. So I hope we do not do a gathering just to come and eat and drink tea. I hope that after this gathering, I hope that you will write a strong recommendation to the, the University of Free State and the Univers uh, Sankara University of Technology to put fund aside for researchers to be able to publish their paper wherever they want to publish their paper, not only in non-open access. Because sometimes, even in non-open access, when you want to publish in open access, they ask you for 3,000, like Elsevier, like Springer. Where am I going to get that money? Whereas if I publish one paper, the university receives 120,000. Let, let us be, do business here. If you tell me, okay, I will pay uh, 10,000 for each paper, publish me 200 paper, who will gain? You gain. But if I can only publish two papers because of the limitation of open access, who lost you? 
So please, we should not only come here, we grant tea, uh, we eat nice food there, then at the end, we don't see the result. I want this, after this meeting, that it should be clear to the mind of the rector, it should be clear to the mind of the vice rector of research that we need to implement open access in our university because in the next two, three, four years, all the journal will be open access. I can tell you because myself, I'm editor in many journals in Elsevier, the discussion we had last time is that, for example, Kawo, Soliton, and Fractal, that is Q1 journal in mathematics, will be open access. Most of Elsevier journals are open access. Let me tell you something you don't understand. Maybe you understand. When you publish in non-open access, the person that is becoming very rich is the publisher. Because the university have to subscribe for us to see the paper online. Individual people have to pay money for us to get the paper online. But if you publish open access, even people from poor country can have your paper, read them, use them, and serve you. So it is very important for us that we adopt also that strategy where we will have fun available for our uh, professor, for our researcher, our young researcher to uh, be exposed to, to publish their paper in open access. And I started this fight in 2013, before this meeting started. I started this fight and I told the vice rector that time that she, she does not know. And today, I'm glad that my small fight with uh, the butterfly effect, the chaotic effect, is, is taking wind, is, is going around, telling people that this is the way forward. You publish a paper, people have to see it. There is one paper I published with my student. She told me, Prof, I will use my money, I will make this paper open access. I said, okay, I don't have money. She published this paper, when I went to India for a conference, our paper was everywhere on the table. People was waiting for me to ask questions. Because why? Everybody was able to download the paper. Everybody was able, even in the poor country, even in the rich country, everybody was able to, to download paper. So please, I don't know who is in charge here. I want you <laughs> to go and tell the vice rector that many researchers from your university have a limitation to publish their paper due to the fact that there is no fund available to publish paper in open access, while a small Chinese who cannot even do what I can do is able to publish 100 paper a year. That is why the, the ranking of their university is better than our ranking, because they produce a lot. That is why China, it is clear, there is a clear coloration between production of knowledge and development. If you go to China, you will see the development. If you go to America, you will see the development. But if you come to Africa, you will also see the development or undevelopment in terms of the straight line. <laughs> so I'm not going to be long. I'm going back to my office. Today is, <laughs> today it is a very nice day for me, for my name to appear in this list. It's a grim, not a grim, uh, it is uh, the product of my effort, the product of my love for Africa, the product of my love for a young Africa to say that one day I'm proud to be African. Thank you.